If you'd like to see how I achieved this makeup look using only drugstore high street products on my mature over 50 skin, then please keep watching. Hello, Des here and thank you so much for joining me on this video, which I'm super excited about because I will be doing a full face of high street drugstore makeup for the over 50 woman. On a regular basis, when I make myself up every day, I use a combination of high street and high end products. So in this video, what I've done is I've substituted the high end products for drugstore products. And they are new to me. So some of them are in the packaging and some are relatively recent and some are really quite old or in terms of I've been using them for quite some time. So I thought it'd be really interesting to see whether the high street drugstore products work as effectively as the high-end ones. So without further ado, let's get cracking. And just to let you know, and cheers by the way, I'm having a coffee, it's Friday morning and um, I need it. <laughs> and, um, mm. oh, that's so good. I um, have prepped my skin, I've got my sunscreen on and mixed with a vitamin C powder and I'll put the details down below for you. I have a normal skin. I'm not at the moment using a moisturizer. I don't seem to find the need for it. My skin is not dry. I mean, we haven't really had a very prolonged cold snap yet. So my skin hasn't been dry, but it is very sensitive to fragrance. It's allergic to fragrance. So I can't use any products that have fragrance in them at all. So none of the products I'll be using today have fragrance, but to be honest, most of them don't. Most makeup doesn't contain fragrance. The only ones that might do, I suppose, are foundations or concealers, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, without further ado, let us begin. So the first product I'm going to be applying is the L'Oreal True Match Foundation, and I have it in the color 5N, which is sand. Before I apply it, let me just tell you a bit about it. Now, I, I, this is my second bottle, so I have actually used this. This is not a new product to me, and I use this on a pretty regular basis. I really, really like it. And um, it is a skin infused foundation. It has hyaluronic acid and glycerin and aloe vera. And it gives a natural bare to skin coverage, perfectly matching your skin tone. It comes in 40 shades and it's supposed to provide 24 hour hydration. I'm not going to be wearing it for 24 hours, but it's, um, it is hydrating. The only thing I, I notice about it actually, when I compare it, I'm just gonna shake it and pop. I mean, probably I'll just put one pump on. It's not too liquidy. The one thing I have found, and I'm going to apply it with my fingers, because at the moment I'm quite enjoying applying foundation with my fingers. The one thing I have found is that it, um, it sometimes needs a powder because I don't think it's got alcohol in it. I'll check that in a minute. Actually, I need a little bit more. Um, I do find that it can be a little bit on the glowy side, a bit too glowy for my taste. But let's see how it's looking. It feels very smooth on the skin. As you can see from, as you saw from the, um, from the swatch, or well not the swatch, but as you saw, as you saw from the, um, the pump that I put on there, it's not that liquidy, it's not that runny. But I think it gives pretty good coverage and it feels nice on the skin. Compared to the serum foundation, which I have seen a lot of YouTubers talk about and complain about the dropper um, applicator actually, this one, um, oh yeah, it's called the True Match Plumping Tinted Serum Foundation. Compared to that one, this has alcohol um, lower down the ingredients list. This one might be better than the L'Oreal Tinted Serum Foundation. I mean, just so you can see, I'm gonna come a bit nearer. You can see my skin is really very lined and I've got crow's feet, I've got the 11s, I've got the dreaded, whatever they're called, these ones are the marionette lines. I hate that expression, I hate it. But anyway, I've got them. My worst sort of thing for me is the droopy jawline. I mean, what can you do about that? I, you can't really, I think you can have fillers, but I don't think it really makes any difference. And I haven't had any work done apart from, I tried Botox about 
10 years ago. I think I had a couple of sessions up here, but I don't think it made any difference. I don't think the woman, the dermatologist, did it very well. I don't think she was that interested. It was one of those, it was private, obviously, but they just were trying to have a large turnover and I don't think she made much of an effort, really, to, um, to do anything. So I haven't had any other work done apart from I had my nose done when I was... 21. So the next product I'm going to use is an e.l.f. Camo Concealer and this one here. Now the shade I'm in, or at least the shade I bought, is medium sand. But actually compared to this uh, foundation which is also called sand, it's a bit light. However, I don't think it matters terribly because once I've put some powder on it to set it, it doesn't seem to look too bad. But anyway, let me show you. It has a doe foot applicator nice and thick. Now the secret is to only put a tiny bit on otherwise it really does spread quite a lot so let me just look in the mirror just dot I'm just going to do two dots oh well one dot and then I'm going to blend it in with my fingers as well and then I might set it with my sponge but you can see I think you can see that it is quite light wow gosh it, in the, in the uh, camera I can see how light it is. Now I always put it on my eyelids because I don't use a primer. I should have said that before. I'm not really convinced that primer makes any difference to my skin at all, whether it e elongates, no not elongates, but whether it lengthens the wear time of my foundation. I really do not notice the difference, even though I, I quite like the e.l.f. Uh, Paula's Putty Primer. It feels quite nice to put on, but I am not convinced it makes much of a difference. Now, I think that looks pretty good. I don't think that has set into fine lines at the moment. Obviously, it might do later, but I haven't noticed that it does. Yeah, so just to let you know what is in the e.l.f. Camo Concealer, what it says here is um, full coverage with the satin finish, which I would agree with, all day wear time, large doe foot applicator, correct? Great for normal combination and dry skin and shade match guarantee allows you to buy with confidence. Well, like I say, I think that's pretty good. It's a little bit light, but we're going to put some powder on in a second. And it contains sodium hyaluronate. I can't pronounce that. Helps provide hydration by locking in moisture. Rose flower water. Oh, that sounds nice. Helps soothe skin with anti-inflammatory properties. So there you go. And it's in 25 shades. So what I'd normally do after putting on my concealer is I would set it with a powder with my Charlotte Tilbury. But actually what we're going to do today is I've bought this new powder by L'Oreal True Match Powder in the shade 4N. And I'm going to be setting the concealer with this powder. Okay, so there it is. So let's set it. I'm afraid the one thing I haven't done is my brushes are not all high street, I have to say. So this is my favourite uh, powder setting brush for my eyes and my under eyes so I'll just tap a bit off there let's just and I usually just pat it around like this okay I mean yes you can see my fine lines under my eyes are a bit visible particularly on this eye I think this one's worse than that one I don't know if you can see for some reason <laughs> nothing's even is it well, I think that powder's set really well. Not cakey, looking good. Okay, now the next thing I usually do are my brows and my recent holy grail brow product is a Bobbi Brown. So of course I can't use a Bobbi Brown today because we're using high street drugstore makeup. So I have gone for a Revolution XX Fine Brow Micro Brow Definer. Blimey, it's a bit thin. <laughs> Okay, so it's got a spoolie at one end, very nice, and it's got a twist up pencil. Now, I am really rubbish at drawing in brows with very fine pencils, but I couldn't find anything that was a substitute for the Bobbi Brown, which I love because the Bobbi Brown's got a really nice thick nib, as it were, but this one is very fine, but we'll give it a go. So, oh, actually, do you know what? That's rather good, look. Mmm, liking this. Not having to press too hard. In fact, the key thing is don't press too hard, I think. Because otherwise you might come a bit nearer. Mmm, well, I must say I'm quite impressed with this. 
I'll tell you what the colour is in a minute. Yeah, what do you think? Not bad, eh? For somebody as cat-handed as me, that's the thing, because I am really not good at drawing or painting or anything like that. Um, so, the, you know, for example, when I write, my handwriting is awful, I can't even read my own handwriting, but if I use a, a nice broad nib, then at least I can make an effort at... Um, make doing nice handwriting oh do you know i remember one of my school teachers wrote when i was about seven i mean i was very young that my handwriting was mediocre i was so upset that was in the days when we used ink pens and ink wells if you please as well god that's going back a bit so the next thing i'm going to do is my shadows and i have bought the most beautiful looking palette by elf called the rose gold nude and let me just show you how beautiful that is I mean look at that isn't that just stunning let me just swatch a few for you actually I'll swatch the ones that I think I'm going to go for so I think what I'll do is we will go for the dusky I don't know what that one's called let's see oh it seemed to have the names on it right so these are the tones that I'm going to go for oh sorry my hand's shaking I don't know why Aren't they beautiful? Absolutely beautiful. Let me come a bit closer if I can. Oh wow, they look amazing and they feel lovely on the skin. Okay, so I'm going to start with a transition shade. So I'm just going to pop some of this sort of dusky pink colour as the transition shade. Be careful not to get it into I hope you can see actually let me come a bit closer I have to be careful not to get it in here because it doesn't look quite so good then so my aim when I make myself up or when I do my eyes my, my main aim is really to have a dark shadow on my lid and then above my lid in the crease to go a bit lighter. So that's why I'm doing the transition shade all over, as it were. And then I'm going to pop some stronger colour on the actual lid. Because for me, I was thinking about this yesterday and I was looking at photos of Hollywood actresses, for example, like some of my favourites, like Catherine Zeta-Jones or Helen Mirren or Juliana Margulies. So my main aim with my eye makeup is to make my eyes stand out. And I do that by darkening as much of the eye lid as I can to make my eyes stand out. So that's the aim. So I put the transition shade on first and then, and then I put a dark colour on the lid and then I might go even darker around close to the eyelashes. So let me just put the same colour on this side. It's a £10 palette and it's got some really great colours in it. There we go. So that's, that'll do for now. We, we might tidy it up a bit later. So the next colour I'm going to use on my actual lid is this nice plummy tone here. So I'm going to use a flat brush. This one, which is a newly discovered beauty pie, beauty pie, beauty pie brush. Right, so let's place that on the actual lid. And you can see how creased my lid is. I mean, it really is like an elephant hide. But what can you do? This is age for you, isn't it? We have to go with the flow. So I'm getting a bit of fallout, but actually it's not that bad, is it really? Can you see it's just a tad? So we're deepening the colour on the lid there. Yeah, I like that. Can you see it's sort of going from dark to lighter? So we'll do the same on the other lid. Oh dear, all these folds. I think my left, well you're right, my left, so this one is the is the more oops is the more hooded of the two. But you know we have to manage as best we can. Well I'm really liking that colour, I must say. That's right up my street. I need to tidy this up a bit, which I will do in a minute when I do a bit of blending. In fact, let's do that now. Let's do a bit of blending. Let's get my blending brush. This one here. 
I will link absolutely everything down below for you so you know exactly what brushes I've used. As I say, the brushes are not all high street drugstore brushes, I'm afraid. Some of them are and some aren't. And I think this one, well, I can't remember what this one is now, actually, to be honest. Anyway, I'm doing the slightly the windscreen wipery thing, but trying not to go too much into the corner there because we don't want colour right in the corner. So I'm going to stop before I get to that bit. So we've had a bit of fallout, but it's not too bad. I'm just going to wipe that up now. Before I use the final eyeshadow, uh, the plum coloured one, I'm going to get my L'Oreal the liner. Now this is one of my uh, this is one of my drugstore finds that I've been using for a long time, and I really, really like it. It's a L'Oreal the liner in cashmere noir or noir cashmere. It's a retractable pen. I'm just going to line very roughly my top lid. You can see it's very rough there, it's not, you see, nothing, nothing too perfect because there you can see I've just very roughly lined my eyelids just very close to the lashes but now I'm going to go over that line with the very nice plummy colour, this one here, my nice thin brush and I'm going to place the colour over the black kind of sort of smudge it out which is going to create a darkness around my eyelids to make my eyes pop right we'll just tidy that up a tiny bit I think there's been a bit of fallout there I think that's looking pretty good the next thing I'm going to do is just to wake my eyes up a bit in case they're looking a little bit bloodshot is use this Cole Kajal liner in a cream color it, again it's a retractable pencil it's max factor I'm just going to pop that under my, on the rim of my eyes, just to wake them up just a little bit. Oops, sorry. Uh, I need to look over here. I need to get a cotton bud because I think there's a bit of debris in the corner here. Let's just check. So now we can go in with our lash primer and mascara. Now these are two products that I've been using for a long time. The Lash Paradise by L'Oreal, which is the primer followed by the L'Oreal Bambi Eyes False Lash and I absolutely love both of them and they are fabulous. So I'll just go off camera and do that. Okay, so now I've done my mascara. Now the only difference with what I would normally do is on my bottom lashes I would use the MAC Giga Black Mascara which is a tubing mascara and it doesn't smudge but this time I've used the Bambi Eyes to be consistent and just use um, drugstore makeup, I've put the Bambi eyes on the bottom as well. Now, let us do blusher and bronzer. Now, the bronzer is a drugstore product and it's quite new to me, but I have been using it for the last couple of weeks and it's the Milani uh, Silky Matte Bronzer in Sunkissed. I discovered this bronzer from Kimberly from Pretty Over 50 and I think it, she uses it and she's quite pale compared to me. But do you know what? I really like it. Um, it's not as dark as the my usual bronzer, which is the Stone Street by Bobbi Brown. Let me just show you here. It's really quite pale, but I think it's actually on my skin. It's actually not that different to my skin, but I sort of went off using a dark bronzer. Anyway, see what you think. Let's pop some on. This is my Morphe brush, which I really like for bronzer. Let me just pop some on my cheeks or just under my cheeks, under my... I mean, I do this. <laughs> this is a triumph of hope over experience, really. <laughs> Putting it under my chin, I don't know if it makes any difference. One of my new drugstore products is the e.l.f. Uh, Primer Infused Shimmer Blush. Here it is. It is in the colour. One day I'll be able to read these things. It's oh yeah. It's in the colour Always Silly, which seems to be very appropriate for me. And there it is. It's a lovely dusky, kind of a dusky pink, I suppose. Let me swatch a bit. Oh, it feels lovely. Quite light, which is nice. My blusher brush is a uh, drugstore product. It's this e.l.f. brush, which I like very, very much. So let's pop a bit on, tap it off. Ooh, 
Ooh, I like it. That is a beautiful colour, isn't it, don't you think? I don't know if I can see any shimmer in it. Actually, I was expecting it to be a bit over the top, but you know, I don't think it is. I'm really liking that. I must say, Elf is one of those brands that I've become more and more impressed with since I've got to know it. I'm going to blend now with my Kabuki brush. Let's do a bit of blending. I suppose I was expecting the blush to be, as I say, more highlighty and shimmery, but actually it's not. But I love the colour. I really love it. I think it looks absolutely fab. Well, I'm super impressed with everything I've tried so far. So let us now finish with lipstick. And actually I've gone for two different lipsticks. So we're gonna try out both of them and see which one we like best. So the first one is by a company that I've never bought uh, any products from before and it's called Wet n Wild. And this is a liquid, <laughs> I love this name, liquid catsuit. Hmm. And make of that what you will, mega last. But the colour looks like right up my street, it's that dusky pink again. And I really like liquid lipsticks, I must say. So the two that I tend to wear a lot are the Anastasia Beverly Hills. The only thing that I will say about them, which is quite interesting, is when I apply them, and I don't know, it might be the way I apply them, is I often end up looking as though I've drawn, you know, as though I've used a pencil on my top lip, which I don't mind terribly, but I don't usually use a pencil. Well, we've got a nice doe foot applicator here, quite small. Oh yeah, that's definitely my colour, isn't it? That's definitely my colour. Mmm, it's nice and bendy, this doe foot, actually. Mmm. Yeah, I think that's a really good colour for me. That's right up my street. We'll just wait a few seconds to see if it does that dry down thing that a lot of these long stay liquid lipsticks do. Well I think that lipstick has now dried and what do you think? I think that's a really great colour. It feels very nice on the lips. It doesn't feel drying at all but it's just obviously dried down from its original liquid state. Um, but. I don't know whether, how long it'll last, but to be honest, I'm not expecting lipsticks to last after I've eaten something, so I'm fine with that. But let's try the next one. Well, it's a bit of a struggle to get that one off, actually, but this next one is by Max Factor, and it's Lip Affinity Lip Colour, 24 hours. I mean, again, who is going to wear lipstick for 24 hours? Maybe they will, but not very likely. You get two separate products, and what it says is you use... Uh, apply the colour once, first thing in the morning, and it will last all through coffee, lunch and afternoon tea. Hmm, okay. Uh, not dinner though, it doesn't mention dinner. And then the second step is step two, apply the apply the moisturising top coat for moisture and shine. Oh, okay, so I might not apply the other, uh, I might not apply the top coat because I don't really like shine on my lipstick. But anyway, this is it here and it is in the colour, it's in the colour 082. Okay, so we get, oops, yeah, we get a nice doe foot applicator. Hi, on. Mmm. Ooh. Mmm, this is very nice. So this is a slightly warmer tone, so probably not the tone that I would necessarily go for. As you can see, I tend to go for a cooler dusky rose colour, but I'm not averse to it actually. But just for fun, let us apply the shiny top coat as well. Oh, ah, okay, so that's the shiny top coat thing. It's a kind of a, what would you call that? Waxy, I suppose, that's how you call it, isn't it? Oh, oh yeah, that feels very nice on the skin. Or on the lips, I should say. Hmm. Yeah, not bad. 
What do you think? I am super impressed with all these drugstore products. I really, really am. And let me just go over the new ones for you in particular. Well, some of the new old ones. I mean, the True Match Foundation. It's funny, at the beginning of the video, I said that it actually often needed powdering down. But today, maybe I just put the right amount on and I didn't feel that it did need any powdering down at all. It doesn't look too shiny. It looks exactly right. So I'm very impressed with the L'Oreal True Match. And also the e.l.f. Camo Concealer. I really think it's been a star performer. I don't think my under eyes look particularly cakey or I don't think it's settled too much into my fine lines. Very impressed with that. Ditto the True Match powder, which I've only used around my, um, my eyes, but again, don't think it's made them look particularly cakey at all. Then um, the Milani bronzer, um, which as I say isn't brand new but it's only a few weeks old in my collection and I really love it and I think that it's given me a bit of a glow, a bit of definition to my face but it hasn't made it look too dark. Absolutely loving the pencil. I mean gosh, I honestly didn't think that this pencil would be any good for me because I just thought I'd be too cat handed and it would make my eyebrows look messy and too dark in places and not dark enough in others because I'm not very good at applying them but I think it's a great pencil I mean it feels weighty it feels expensive can't remember how much it is but like I say it's a drugstore product and everything that I've talked about today will be linked and listed below and I think I'm in love with the e.l.f. palette oh my gosh the colours I mean shall I just swatch another couple for you actually just so you can see I'm so excited about it let me show you some of the ones that I didn't use so let me show you the there's a lovely pink a shimmery one, there's a gold shimmery one, there's a pale pink shimmery one. I mean, look at these, aren't they just absolutely beautiful? They really are. This is an absolutely star performer palette. Rose Gold Nude by e.l.f. A real winner, I'd say. And finally, the lipsticks, both of which have been winners as well. We've got the Wet n Wild, and I'm definitely going to be investigating them further as a brand. The Wet n Wild Catsuit Lipstick, this one. And the Max Factor, the two products in one, this one. And then the Gloss Over the Top. I think they're all winners. I really, really do. I'm so pleased to have found all these products. So there you have it. I do hope this video has been useful and helpful. I must say I have absolutely loved all the products that I've used. And now it just goes to show that you can have a full face of drugstore high street makeup. It doesn't have to cost you a fortune and you can find some really fantastic products for very reasonable prices. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. And if you have enjoyed it, please consider giving it a good thumbs up and better yet, subscribing to the channel and leave me a comment below. Have you tried any of these products? Were they any good for you? Would you consider trying some of these? I think there are some real winners in this video and I'm really delighted to have been able to showcase them. And also, if you have enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to the channel because it puts my video in front of other older women like myself, over 50, over 60, who are looking for this type of content. And thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.